In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, today as we celebrate the feast day, the solemnity of Mary's assumption into heaven, as the Church of Springfield, we gather not only to celebrate that wonderful, marvelous feast, but also the ordination of five men to the priesthood for service in the Church of Springfield. Along with Bishop Timothy McDonnell, our Bishop Emeritus, and all of our priests and deacons and religious who are present here, I welcome you to the Cathedral of St. Michael. Today, as we reflect on Mary's life and her assumption into heaven, the reward for faithful discipleship. We also remember too in our prayers today and each day, our five men who will be ordained to the sacred priesthood. I welcome to all of those who have had a part in the formation of our soon to be ordained priest. I welcome Father Steve Salox and Father Joe Scorsella both from St. John's Seminary in Brighton, Father Salox, the rector, Father Scorzella as the formation director of spiritual formation. My brothers and sisters, reflecting upon Mary's life, her yes to the Lord Jesus, the yes of those who are to be ordained, let us ask God then to grant to us forgiveness when we have not followed his will in our lives and failed through our sinfulness. Mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us one day to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Timothy. 
Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through the prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord.
Let those to be ordained priests please stand. Reverend Mr. Stanislas Achu. Reverend Mr. Matthew Barone. Reverend Mr. Michael Goudreau. Reverend Mr. Valentine Nora. Reverend Mr. Sin Trin. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Today is a great day of rejoicing for the Church of Springfield. As we celebrate the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we also jointly celebrate the ordination to the priesthood of Sin Trin, Michael Goudreau, Valentine Wara, Matthew Baroni, and Stanislaus Achu. Mary's yes to God that we hear all through her life, the welcoming of salvation into the world, continues its story as we ordain these five men for the sanctification of God's people. Mary's assumption, the doctrine held by the church that she who was kept free from original sin was also freed from the corruption of death is the hope of us all. In so many ways, it is fitting that we celebrate the ordination of priests on this day. I know that each of them are probably saying, finally, and we are too. For Mary shows us how to be disciples of her son, to listen to his words, to follow in his path. Our gospel today is that of the visitation when Mary, already with child, reaches out to her older cousin Elizabeth, soon to give birth to John the Baptist. Although Mary may have used her own pregnancy as an excuse to remain at home, she is ever looking out in concern for others. Elizabeth needed Mary's help. Mary was willing to come to the aid of her cousin, giving to us the beautiful scene of not only their greeting one another, but of the opportunity for John the Baptist to recognize the Lamb of God, years before encountering Jesus in the baptism at the River Jordan. The visitation foreshadows the great event that begins the public ministry of Jesus with his baptism by John. Mary's visit to Elizabeth sets the scene for what will happen later in the lives of their sons, how God's grace impacts our human history in events both humble and perhaps even unnoticed. Our newly ordained priests will begin their ministry in a world that is in great need of healing. From the effects of the COVID-19 virus to that of national upheaval and lack of civil dialogue, they are being called to bring the healing power of Jesus to many situations that will call forth from them the grace to reach out to others. 
Healing and presence are so needed. The presence of a priest who knows the power of Jesus and the intercession of his mother brings a, a balm to times of uncertainty and trials. Our five new priests are also ordained as our Church of Springfield marks the milestone of 150 years since being established by Pope Pius IX. In today's ordination mass, as a sign of our unity throughout the ages, I will use the chalice of Springfield's first bishop, Patrick T. O'Reilly, given to him on his 20th anniversary of ordination as a bishop. Our history of salvation does indeed date back many centuries, as do our ties with the more recent history of our church here in Western Massachusetts. As a native of Cavan, Ireland, Bishop O'Reilly came to this country as an immigrant, seeking to be of service as a priest. His generous response to God's call here in this part of our commonwealth set a firm foundation on bringing the gospel to a people who needed the stability of faith to help them in their newly adopted land. The visitation also gives to us one of the most beautiful prayers of the church, Mary's Magnificat. After Elizabeth's greeting, Mary give pray, gives praise to God for all he has done for her. This prayer is recited daily as part of the evening prayer of the church in the Liturgy of the Hours. Our soon-to-be-ordained priests have been praying the office over these years. The Magnificat is a wonderful reminder of God's goodness to Mary and ultimately to us all. Because of Mary's generous acceptance of God's will for her, we can rejoice at the nearness of salvation born into our world in Jesus, our Savior. Throughout her life, from Cana in Galilee to the cross at Calvary, Mary faithfully followed her divine son. May Michael, Sin, Valentine, Matthew, and Stanislaus heed the inspiring example Mary gives to us and in their living out of priestly life, bringing God's people the presence of Mary's Son, our Savior and hope, Jesus Christ, born into our world so that we, like Mary, may be born into eternity. Beloved brothers and sisters, because these, our sons, who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of priest, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are about to be raised. It is true that God has made his entire holy people a royal priesthood in Christ. Nevertheless, our great priest himself, Jesus Christ, chose certain disciples to carry out publicly in his name, on behalf of the human race, a priestly office in the church. For Christ was sent by the Father, and he in turn sent the apostles into the world, so that through them and their successors, the bishops, he might continue to exercise his office of teacher, priest, and shepherd. Indeed, 
priests are established co-workers of the order of bishops, with whom they are joined in the priestly office, and with whom they are called to service to the people of God. After mature deliberation, these, our brothers, are now to be ordained to the priesthood in the order of the presbyterate, so as to serve Christ, the teacher, priest, and shepherd, by whose ministry his body, that is the church, is built and grows into the people of God, a holy temple. In being configured to Christ, the eternal high priest, and joined to the priesthood of the bishops, they will be consecrated as true priests of the New Testament to preach the gospel, to shepherd God's people, and to celebrate the sacred liturgy, especially the Lord's sacrifice. Now, dear sons, you are to be raised to the order of priesthood. For your part, you will exercise the sacred duty of teaching in the name of Christ, the teacher. Impart to everyone the word of God, which you have received with joy. Meditating on the law of the Lord, see that you believe what you read, that you teach what you believe, and that you practice what you teach. In this way, let what you teach be the nourishment for God's people. Let the holiness of your lives be a delightful fragrance to Christ faithful, so that by word and example you may build up the house, which is God's church. Likewise, you will exercise in Christ the office of sanctifying, for by your, the, your ministry, the spiritual sacrifice of the faithful will be made perfect, being united to the sacrifice of Christ, which will be offered through your hands in an unbloody way on the altar, in union with the faithful, in celebration of the sacraments. Understand, therefore, what you do and imitate what you celebrate. As celebrants of the mystery of the Lord's death and resurrection, strive to put to death whatever in you is sinful and to walk ever in the newness of life. Remember, when you gather others into the people of God through baptism, when you forgive sins in the name of Christ and the church in the sacrament of penance, when you comfort the sick with holy oil and celebrate the sacred rites, when you offer prayers of praise and thanks to God throughout the hours of the day, not only for the people of God, but for the whole world, remember then that you are taken from among men and appointed on their behalf for those things that pertain to God. Therefore, carry out the ministry of Christ the priest with constant joy and with genuine love, attending not to your own concerns, but to those of Christ Jesus. Finally, dear sons, exercising for your part the office of Christ, head and shepherd, while united with the bishop and subject to him, strive to bring the faithful together into one family, so that you may lead them to God the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit. Keep always before your eyes the example of the Good Shepherd, who came not to be served, but to serve, and who came to seek out and save what was lost. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank, as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? I do. 
Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the Church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Stanislaus, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Matthew, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Michael, do you promise obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Valentine. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Sin. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Amen. My dear people, let us pray to God, our all-powerful Father, that he will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priest.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites, when you sent Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them. You chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and to assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim. He made his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness, and may they henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order so that there, by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach ever to the ends of the world. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, O Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to your care and for all the world. And so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into one people and made perfect in your kingdom through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed you with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you that you may offer sacrifice for the Christian people to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, Guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen.
receive the oblation of the holy people of God to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform yourself to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as, at the, be as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels and saints, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Yeah. 
for, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Mitchell our Bishop with the order of bishops, these your servants who have been ordained today as priests for the church, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give Christ admission to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Bring now eternal life unto us who will receive it.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only the Spirit. ask that you please stay at your places and our five newly ordained will bring communion to you. Thank you very much for your cooperation in this.
Let us pray. Having received this sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of Father Chris Malatest and myself, the co-vicars for clergy, I first want to acknowledge our newly ordained and welcome them into our presbyterate here in Springfield. Welcome, fathers. You did a great job. Congratulations. As you are aware, this is probably the last official act of Archbishop Rosansky here in the Diocese of Springfield. And again, on behalf of Father Malatessa and myself, we want to represent the priests of the Diocese here at Springfield, those who are here, those who couldn't make it, those who are newly ordained, and those who have been serving the community for decades. We want to express our deepest gratitude to Archbishop for all the hard work he's done for us over the course of the last six years. There have been sorrows and there have been great joys, but through it all, he has done it with great grace and dignity, and we thank him for his service. And on, as a small token of our appreciation, Father Chris would like to award him with a present. I stand with all of our brother priests and uh, deacons and religious in the diocese that said such a um, privileged to um, have um, worked with you. And we said, what do we get a guy that has everything? <laughs> and we decided that we would get you a travel gift certificate, knowing your love for travel. So to Archbishop Mitchell Rosansky, we give you a gift for travel of your choice, a gift of the priests of the Diocese of Springfield, including our newly ordained. And we congratulate you and thank you for your many blessings that you have brought upon it each and every one of us. Thank you. Please be seated for just a few more moments. It struck me during this rite of ordination as our newly ordained priests pledged their obedience uh, when I asked them, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors, that their one act of obedience to me would be to accept their priestly assignments in the parish. So indeed, as we celebrate this wonderful today, day and we congratulate our newly ordained priest, uh, also we uh, announce their assignments. Father Stanislaus Hachu will be going to Holy Name Parish in Springfield. Father Matthew Baroni will be at St. Thomas the Apostle Parish in West Springfield. Father Michael Goudreau will be at St. Joseph Parish in Pittsfield. Reverend Valentine Nwora will be at Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament Parish in Westfield. And Reverend Sin Trin will be at St. Paul the Apostle Parish in Springfield. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate uh, our newly ordained, to thank them for their yes to God as Mary gave her yes to God and in pledging to promise your lives for the service of God's people. We gather as not the entire Church of Springfield, but as representatives of the entire Church of Springfield to tell you that we pray for you and that we ask God to guide you each and every day of your priesthood. My thanks here to Father Steve Salox and Father Joseph Kalunza for, for their presence 
and their work along with all of those in our seminaries who have worked along with our newly ordained priest. To Bishop Timothy McDonald for his continued ministry here in the Diocese of Springfield and all that he continues to do for us as God's people. To my brother priests and deacons, to men and women in religious life, to all of my co-workers at the Pastoral Center, I will miss you and I am grateful to God that we had this opportunity over these past six years to work together. My thanks to Deacon Leo Coplin and all who helped him in this ceremony, to Lad Pfeiffer and to Michael Cremoni and to our cantors who helped us to praise God in such a beautiful way for this solemnity of the assumption and this ordination to priesthood of our priest. We ask that God continue wherever we are to guide us in his ways, to protect us, and to lead us always to him. Now let us stand for God's blessing. And at this time, I invite our newly ordained to bestow their blessing upon our people. Heavenly Father, on the God of all things, the God of sort of life, I bless on all of you and protect you all from harm in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty Father, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint Michael, Saint John Paul II, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, creator of humanity, we pray that you bless your people today, those present here and those who are watching through the media in Vietnam, Nigeria, here in the U.S., and any other part of the world. And through the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessings upon all those gathered here today, and we ask for blessings on all of those who could not be with us today. And we ask for you to send down your grace and blessings upon the entire Diocese of Springfield, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he make his face shine upon you. Amen. May he shine his light upon you and give you his peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just an announcement uh, as we end our beautiful ceremony of ordination. If you would please take your programs with you as you leave the church and also if you would leave the kneelers down in the places where you are seated that will help uh, those who will clean the church afterward uh, to be able to do so so thank you for your cooperation in this the lord be with you may god who founded the church and guides her still protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood, we pray. Amen. May he who made you servants and witnesses to the world, to divine charity and truth, and faithful ministers of reconciliation, we pray. Amen. And may he who made you true shepherds, to provide living bread and word of life to the faithful, that you may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ, we pray. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.